Welcome to the Middlesex Moments radio show. I am Dr. Anna Wasesha, president of Middlesex Community College, and joining me today is Cynthia Clegg, who is the CEO and president of the Middlesex County Community, Community Foundation. Foundation. And we are going to be talking about the foundation in general and philanthropy, and I think probably the ways that this organization, your foundation, strengthens all of the communities within Middlesex County. I, was, I looked at your website this morning, I love websites, and learned a lot more about the foundation that I would picked up through casual conversation. And, and it occurred to me that your, your sort of region or territory is identical to that of Absolutely. the community college. Mm-hmm. Right? So I want to hear from you how you work with 18 different communities. 15. 15. So oh. 15 different towns. And we really, because we're local, and if you think about a community foundation, think of the word community. So if you've been to a library in your hometown, or if you've been to a museum, if you've been to the historical society, then you've been touched by the community foundation. So it really is very personal. While we're broad and and county-based, we really go down to the local level with our grants and with the donors who really care about where they live. How do you communicate with the the community? How do you how do they know where you are and what you've done? Oh my to make gosh. the community well, a better you, place. When you give a grant, it's really a big thing. Mm-hmm. And really, this the we communicate through the grantees. Mm. So they're so proud of the programs that we're investing in that they help us spread the word. But we don't just do that. The website, as you mentioned, which will be under construction next year, but also two newsletters, an annual report, mm-hmm. and then constant contact. And that really helps a great deal as well. And I'm totally out in front of everybody and we reach and try very hard to reach as many of the grantees on a weekly basis as we possibly can so site visits and we invite our donors to go on the site visits so that they can see what their investment has has done and i want you to start thinking about the community foundation in a different way i want you to think of it as um, a venture capital firm and Mm -hmm. our donors are the angel investors Mm -hmm. And really, we as a venture capital firm really watch over where their dollars go, number one, and then number two, what the grantees are doing with with the dollars. That's our role. Mm -hmm. So we'll be segueing into longer sequences in this radio program, but I'm curious about if you could, off the top of your head, think about some of the more compelling investments that the foundation has made. I think that one of the newest investment that we made that is the most compelling and I urge people to get down there in the summer is Sail Access Connecticut. And this is a volunteer driven organization and the neurologically impaired and the physically handicapped people are allowed to sail with these specially equipped sailboats, the high seas as I call them of Long Island Sound. And to see the reaction, the freedom of being able to do what normal sailors do and take for granted. Mm-hmm. To see that investment um, is is really quite compelling. It sounds marvelous. And to somebody coming from the Midwest, the whole idea of sailing is just <laughs> terrific. I love it. But we're going to have to take a break. And okay. when we come back, we'll be talking some more about the foundation and the investments that it's making in our community. Welcome back. With me today is Cynthia Clegg from Middlesex County Community Foundation. And we've been talking about the foundation and the investments it's making in our community. Uh, And I thought, well, first of all, let me just say I've only been here for about five months. So Cynthia has been remarkable in helping me to learn more about this region and introduce me to people who are every day making a difference. So in those brief five months, I've learned a little bit about the foundation. You've been with the foundation since 07, right? 2007? July of 07, July 1st. How has it changed in the period of time that you've been there? Well, it's changed in the number of funds that we have, and I think um, the concept of a community foundation is sometimes very difficult for people to understand because we don't do programs. So you can Mm -hmm. easily identify with programs, but we invest in programs. So we've made a concerted effort to educate donors about philanthropy because we are donor-centric, and I like to say the community foundation can be all things to all people. We really did that. We started with the donors because they are the more import- they are the most important thing because they give their hearts, put their hearts mm-hmm. into action as they put their money into action as well. So we started there. Mm-hmm. So we're up to 132 funds right now. Each one is individualized and unique based on the donor who started them. And that's what makes our job so special because we'll understand what a donor wants to do and really see what kind of fund would 
fit the donor's philanthropic wishes. So that's really something that, that I find very compelling. The other thing that we've tried to educate folks about is that the Community Foundation is very unique in Community Foundation um, land, if you will. We didn't start with a huge bequest, which is the way most community foundations started. It was started by the folks of Middlesex County because they figured that every other region in Connecticut had a community foundation. So the neighbors and friends got together and started this grassroots effort to start what is now close to seven million dollars in in an endowment and that to me really is very compelling because you know our county now Anna and mm -hmm. it's a wonderful place to live and work and play but it's the neighbors who got together sure. and got it started sure. and the fact that 132 donors started funds so that they can do what their hearts are, te are telling them to do is really really mm -hmm. very unique so starting with the donor um, was the way we, we I think sort of migrated mm -hmm. things and, mm -hmm. and getting the word out more and more and more so that folks know what we're doing. Now, also, the interesting thing that's changed for me in four and a half years is that people are starting to knock on our door to say, oh, good. I've got a great idea. I, I really want to see if I can put this, my heart to work and my dollars to work. And so that's very nice. We even had one this morning, I mean, which is the a Monday after Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. who would somebody thought over the weekend mm -hmm. and thought to call the Community Foundation? I think that's fantastic. Let me ask about, and perhaps it would be useful to the listeners as well, let me ask about the, the kind of amount of money that somebody might need to be thinking about if they were going to approach the mm -hmm. foundation. And then also, uh, is that sort of pass-through money, or is that money that's invested and then, you know, it will live on in perpetuity? Well, as I said, we can be all things to all oh, people. Right. Um, so we have what we call unendowed funds, which in effect a donor can spend the entire amount of the fund, the principal, mm -hmm. every year and then replenish it. And we have a number of people who do that. They want to give their what they raise every year away and put it immediately to work. And then we have our endowed funds, which um, are kept and a little bit is given away every year and so they're kept in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. Those funds are pooled together for our competitive grants process and so mm -hmm. once a year we do um, a competitive grants process where the nonprofits will apply and we cover all focus areas. As I said at the very beginning, if you've been touched by a museum or a library or the arts or a soup kitchen, then we have the funds that go out back into the community to cover those mm -hmm. focus areas. You also have environment in there and we animals. Have, we have environment and we have a wonderful donor and her family who started ARF which is Animals Respect and Friendship and it's not specifically for animals although um, we do fund programs for the welfare of animals but it's really to educate us about the benefits of animals and humans humans being together mm -hmm. so we'll fund things such as therapeutic writing um, going to the hospice having animals go to the hospice all these wonderful things so it's really it's really educating mm -hmm. uh, me and and never realized what animals did for everybody you started out as a kindergarten teacher? First I started grade? out as a first grade teacher. First grade teacher. <laughs> I did. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> so when you think back about those, those young, energetic little human beings who entered the classroom, how do you develop a philanthropic sentiment or spirit? Because I have to believe it would start at a very early age. Well, I think a lot of families do a lot of wonderful things that we don't even realize, mm. such as a penny a day gets socked away to give to give or mm -hmm. birthday parties I, I hear a lot of parents now doing birthday parties where they don't want gifts to come they want um, you know five dollars to come so that the, the child whose birthday it is can decide where that money is going to go I think people are very conscious of that I and you and I were talking earlier about the young people there's something to be said about being philanthropic when you're young. It's almost as if I've arrived. I, I've realized that I can be philanthropic. And this year we, we took that and sort of concept and launched an initiative called Live Local, Give Local 365. Mm -hmm. 
which for a dollar a day, now next year it'll be 366 because it's a leap year, oh. <laughs> but for a dollar a day, you can be philanthropic if you leverage your money with other like-minded individuals. So we have 20 founding members of this. Um, some of us have gray hair who are part of that. Some of us don't, and it's mainly young professionals. Um, but in six months, they raised $10,000. And on the seventh month, they gave away five grants. But what they did when they gave that, um, those grants away was they found donors who would match the grants. Oh. So they, again, leveraged the dollars. Mm -hmm. And one of the founding members really took it to the next level where his kids are, are putting away a penny a day. So at the end of the year, they'll be giving away their money too. So there's, mm -hmm. I think people are philanthropic, they just don't think about it, and they don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's mm -hmm. part of the mission of the Community mm -hmm. Foundation. Mm -hmm. The role of the Community Foundation is also so that if somebody comes in and decides they don't really want to um, set up a fund, but they'd like to learn more about the arts nonprofits mm -hmm. in the county, we'll introduce them mm -hmm. and tell them to go get involved. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really outreach. Right. There are so many different ways that people can, can, for example, set up legacy funds in a way right. to honor people who've passed away, right. but also to, to honor those who are still among us by saying, you want to give this gift in honor of, of Absolutely. whomever. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then if you have um, a particular interest, you know, that you want to help foster, but perhaps, I mean, you help people get, obviously your 365 group is able to get other people together so you can bring your resources right. together and make a greater impact. Well, th another example is a group of business people from, from um, I would say, Middletown, Portland, Cromwell area, the, the up county portion of, of Middlesex County, came to me and said, you know, we really do do a lot for the community. We give, you know, we sponsor this, we sponsor that, but we really want to do a little bit more. So they, they started meeting at the community foundation so they could bounce ideas around. We at the community foundation went out and researched certain things for them so that each month they could talk a little bit more. They were very clear on two things. One, they wanted to help middle school students because that's number one. And number two, they believe those middle, middle I can't even talk now, but their mm -hmm. middle school students are their future employees. Yes, that's right. So that's where their focus was. We researched all of the issues going on in the county, and it was an aha moment when they all went, you know what, I've been bullied. My children mm -hmm. have been bullied. My friend's children have been bullied. So they started a whole new program called the No Bully Zone. And that's, I would love to hear some more about that. When we come back after this mm -hmm. break, let's talk about the no bully. So welcome back. With me today is Cynthia Clegg, the president and CEO of the Middlesex County Community Foundation. And of course, we've just finished uh, the Thanksgiving Day weekend. And uh, I think many of us are thinking about reasons we have to be grateful for our friends and our family and for the quality of life uh, in the communities where we live. And so we, we had begun to talk about the no bully zone. The no and bully yeah, zone, let's, right. Yeah, let's sort of, because this is an example of how uh, people's donations, how they're urged to make life better for those people they may not even know, actually take shape. So how did this? Well, these nine businesses, as I said, got together and for six months they, they talked about all of the issues that were affecting their future employees and, and the Bullying was the aha moment, and of course now it's so hot and, and really the, the in topic. Um, but I think these folks were ahead of the curve on that. What ended up happening was that we worked with Rushford Center, which has a prevention management program, and they were already working in the schools, and we augmented the programs that they were working on and allowed the schools, Middletown schools in particular, Kegwood and Woodrow Wilson, allowed the schools to do even more than they were doing and to really structure a positive school climate and give, and the unique thing about this is it's the students to students. Mm. They, the students were the one driving the process. So it was peer to peer, not adult to peer. So our whole thing was the kids needed to have the tools so that when they weren't in school, they could know how to prevent bullying or how to stop bullying mm -hmm. going on. And I'm happy to say that we're now in our second year and it's starting to filter down into the elementary schools because some of the tools are applicable 
and we've found ways that we can take those learning opportunities down into the elementary schools. And we tried something very different this summer with Rushford um, helping. We funded uh, a program with Odd Fellows Playhouse. Mm -hmm. Odd Fellows does the summer circus. Rushford worked with Odd Fellows so that as the students were training for the circus, we were integrating the positive climate lessons into that and we actually did some tracking of that and the, with the parents and the students so integrating the arts and doing things because it's all about the students so sure. we're trying to find whatever way we possibly can to integrate the, those learning moments throughout mm -hmm. and eventually we'd like to make sure that it's throughout the county but um, as we talk about it people in other school systems have found out about it so we've sent the materials down to the Stonington school system and really again it's all about the students and giving them the tools right but it's right. nine small business people isn't that wonderful it is yeah. really yeah. wonderful and there, you know there's always so many uh, things that need to be done too I saw the most remarkable program the other day that featured uh, lunch ladies from Connecticut schools we all have an image of the lunch lady that we remember uh, back in elementary Mine school. Mine made the school. best tuna fish sandwich there in the whole world. You know, you started, you love them because they're sort of mother right. figures. Um, but one of them was really, uh, they were all very, very uh, articulate spokespeople for what they encounter. And for many of them, they serve breakfast and lunch. Those are the only meals that the students right. they serve actually receive in a day. Right. Uh, and they some of them do the backpack program where they send a backpack right. home on Fridays. One woman said, you know, on a Friday at lunch, I always try to give them really filling food because I know they may not really have much to eat until I see them again on Monday morning. Uh, and, and I think of Connecticut as a really pretty affluent state, and yet we have hunger um, among us. We do, and the, the soup kitchens will tell you that it's even more. And if, if people would just realize that a dollar a day means three meals for someone, and that's, that's wow. really what happens. So if you multiply that out, I can't do the math yeah. in my head, but $365, just a right. dollar a day, that's over 1,000 meals. Right. And that, to me, is so amazing. And this is such a good time of the year to be thinking about that coming off the energy it, of Thanksgiving, I it think, really you know. Is. Um, and, and I hope people will be thinking about planning contributions, year-end contributions. And if they did want to make a gift and wanted some advice about it. Oh, they, oh please call. 860-347-0025. We're happy to help. I mean, that's why we're here. We're all about the donor and, and the donor's wishes. Um, of course, we do help the nonprofits and mm -hmm. make sure that they're growing their businesses as they should. My pet question for the nonprofits is, what's your plan to go out of business? Because if you have a plan to go out of business, that means you've succeeded, succeeded in solving that problem. Mm -hmm. And you can use your good business skills and caring skills to go on and solve another problem. That's right. That's right. Hmm. Although, as I'm thinking about it, has anybody said, yes, I have a plan for going out of business? No, they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> there's still a lot to be done. Oh, there's so many things. It, really? is, it really is endless. Really? Yeah. Um, but there are these overarching themes like housing and, and hunger, hunger issues, right. uh, the animals, the environment, and uh, what are the other things? Education. Education, of course. And I health should, and human yeah. services. And we have a wonderful program for the humanities so that people don't forget about heritage and, and humanities. And that's a partnership with the Connecticut Humanities Council so that they're leveraging their reach and expanding their reach through the Community Foundation. Are there examples you can cite? Because I, I just don't know, so I'm learning about what the Humanities Council has done in Middlesex County. Um, the grants that we've done, one was with the Essex Historical Society that actually went into the third grade of Essex Elementary School. And we, Essex is just such a wonderful spot. I happen to live there, but it is. And talk about the history. So the, the students really learned about the history in the town that they um, are living in, mm -hmm. and it's a marvelous, marvelous history of the shipbuilding, the burning of the fleet of, by the British, and the, the War of 1812, and just all of these things that in everyday life we take for granted. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that you want people to realize. Uh, I'm, I'm just so taken back by it because I have to say, you know, the, there is so much more history here in Connecticut than there ever was in Minnesota. 
if, <laughs> if you if you take only white settlement history, and uh, and and I and I'm excited to learn a lot more about the heritage and the culture of this community. Uh, because it represents so much of American history that we learn only, you know, by sort of names and dates, you know, like the War of 1812. Exactly. So, which, of course, I, I know a, a little bit about that, but that it would have happened he here. Absolutely. Big celebration. Um, the burning of the fleet, I think, is in 1814. If I have that wrong, my apologies. But the Connecticut River Museum will be doing a huge celebration mm -hmm. for that. And they've recently made some discoveries of some of the ships that were burned right off the the foot of Maine in the Connecticut River. So, uh, again, wow. every time you turn around, there's something mm -hmm. else that, that we can learn. Mm -hmm. And if you talk about the environment, of course, we have the American bald eagle that winters here on the Connecticut River. And that's a marvelous thing for students um, and for older adults sure. to be able to see our nation's symbol. And I saw um, Ozzie and Harriet, the Oh, Ozzie and Harriet, and that was our fun. That was a grant to the Essex Land Trust. Um, ended tragically with the three chicks not, not making it because we think a predator got it at night, a raptor. Oh. So, But it was a wonderful experience. It really tied everybody together. Mm -hmm. um, real, And they tied that into the Essex Elementary School and other elementary mm -hmm. schools and, and Essex Meadows. So I think doing a grant like that and seeing the community come together around something like that and, mm -hmm. and realizing again what we have in our backyard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you? Do you think you're going to be seeing lots more uh, requests for help with the environment following the um, the hurricane and the uh, early snowfall, the loss of the trees? Well we, we're just past our process or the application process. Mm -hmm. I suspect that in the coming years um, we will. I've mm -hmm. noticed an uptick in uh, the environmental programs for women and girls. And oh. we have a, a very large fund, the Sari A. Rosenbaum Fund for Women and Girls, and so a lot of the applications are, are to get the girls and women out into mm -hmm. the woods. Mm -hmm. So last year, one of our grants allowed girls from Middletown for the first time to go for hikes in the woods. Now look at your campus, and right. look at all the green that we have right. in our county. But for a child not to have been on a hike in the woods mm -hmm. and now to say that that fund allowed that to happen mm -hmm. is really, mm -hmm. it, it's very encouraging. The, there used to be um, a, a, a family pastime of going on nature walks. I mean, this is like 100 years right. ago. And I think people, including my own mother, um, uh, would be able to say this is a maple tree and this is an oak and would be able to, to identify trees. And I think we've lost a lot of that just knowledge of the surrounding environment. Well, I think everyone's so busy and really the school systems are under such pressure with all of the things that they need to put in that I, mm -hmm. I don't know if if they're even able to, to teach that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but all of us had a wonderful lady in our lives mm -hmm. or someone who taught us the sassafras and, right, right. you know, yeah, the ginkgo and all of right. all of those things. It, yeah, and it's uh, it, we're it's we're a great peril, I think, if we lose our connection with the natural world. But let's talk briefly, very briefly, because we just have a few minutes left about the Women's and Girls Fund, because this is a big initiative. This is a very big initiative. It was started by Sari Rosenbaum, who sadly passed away this year, and. Sari um, called up 60 of her best friends, or 59 of her best friends, and said, we're going to get this started. We, we want something that really, the focus of that fund is to empower um, girls and women and help them reach their full potential. And I will tell you that one of the nicest grants that we ever gave was through the Estuary Council Senior, Senior Center down in Old Saybrook. And it was a computer training class for older women mm -hmm. who were divorced or who had lost their job and really retraining them for skills of, of this age that they had never learned before. Mm -hmm. So all of the folks that went through that class got a new job. Um, so again, empowering and improving the lives of the women and the girls obviously walk in the woods. So yes, right, things like that. Right, I walk in the woods. Well, so if uh, any of our listeners have a particular interest in promoting the success and vitality of the women among us, then that would be a fund that they Absolutely. could donate to. Absolutely. Yeah. 
So, well, I really appreciate you taking well, the time. Well, thank you to for the opportunity. Sure. I really appreciate it, and welcome, welcome Th well, to the neighborhood you. in Middlesex yeah. County. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> very much. So now, for uh, those of you, I just want to repeat, who are interested in making year-end contributions, be sure to think about calling the Middlesex County Community Foundation. It's a great organization, and it's located in downtown Middletown. Middletown, absolutely. And uh, for those of you who are interested in learning more about the college, you can visit our website at mxcc.comnet. That's C-O-M-M-N-E-T dot E-D-U. I'm Anna Wasesha, president of Middlesex Community College, wishing you a good day.